So guys, I went to a phenomenal show last night. Let me tell you, it was something I definitely needed. It had been a few months since I've been to a show in general. I went to go see my friends in Gold Metal Gray back in like, I want to say January or February. So it had been a bit. And this was the first like bigger show that I've seen in a long time. So it was much, 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 much freaking needed. As I said, it was in Reading, PA at the Reverb, which is a place that I played probably right around 10 times, I want to say, in my life. I have lost track. And I haven't been there in general since i seen Escape the Fate there in 2018, so it was nice to get back there. It's a venue in the middle of Reading, basically, and it's and it kind of in a ghetto. It's in a very awkward place, but don't be alarmed by that because it's actually very, very nice on the inside. It's not like a dive place or anything. It's actually a legitimately nice venue and whatnot with really good sound and really good lighting. So don't be, like, alarmed and misled by the outside surrounding area. Believe me, it's, it's a lot better on the inside than it is on the outside. However, um, the bands I wanted to go see were the opening band was called Seven Spires. And then the second band was called Visions of Atlantis. And then Firewind was the co-headliner. And then the headliner was the mighty, mighty handsome and attractive and powerful Dragon Force. Now the Guitar Hero 3 band with uh, the Through the Fire and the Flame song. And uh, that nobody could fucking play on Expert unless, like, you have no life and, like, really, really honed in on that. I could not get past that song on Medium. I'll start off with the over Seven Spiders. They're based out of Boston, they said. Uh, and they have members from different, like, parts of the country. Very much a kind of, like, I don't know what the, how, how to describe their genre exactly, but maybe symphonic, power metal, maybe melodic death metal with power metal influence kind of kind of a handful of things like they had a lot of symphonic influence they had some like melodic death metal in there they had some power metal in there they weren't just one thing and it was a nice surprise because with dragon force being more of a power metal band so as far when i expected it to just be nothing but power metal bands and it was a nice pleasant surprise they had you know growling vocals and uh, they had, you know, of course, clean vocals. They had some cool melodic guitars, and they had some shredding, and they had some like keyboard parts. I believe, I believe they did. I, I might be getting them confused with another band. When you're not familiar with the band, it's a little harder to, you know, come up with the lyrics live than it is with a studio recording. So I can't really give you too much of a perspective on that until I start listening to more of their music. And if you guys would like me to do a reaction of any of these bands I'm about to mention, let me know down in the comment section down below, and I shall do so. And um, I got to talk to some of the members afterwards. I talked to the vocalist a little longer than anybody else. And she was very, very, very freaking nice, by the way. And apparently she plays keyboards in Winds of Plague as well. So that's pretty cool, too. Um, I saw them back in 2010 uh, at Mayhem Fest. And she wasn't in the band at the time, she mentioned. But that's pretty fucking cool. Don't really have too much to say other than that. I will play some live video for you guys right now. <laughs> to the second band on the lineup it was visions of atlantis and they're a band uh, derived of members from austria france and italy and they were kind of like a very very it's it, again very very different band you know wasn't quite expecting it um they had a pirate theme they came out in like all these pirate costumes they had like the eye makeup and whatnot it was really cool they had two singers uh, a female singer and a male singer she came out first and she had like kind of like this uh hood all over her face so it was like really cool it kind of raised the mystique and then like i think halfway through the song or something like that she took it off it was, it was really cool um and she was very 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 fantastic at singing like um like she kind of had like almost like a classical kind of voice to her as well like she had a really good falsetto range i think she was in, i think she could hit soprano notes I'm not sure. And then they had a second vocalist come out, and he, he had, like, the, you know, Jack Sparrow kind of look. I mean, he didn't look exactly like Jack Sparrow, but, like, imagine that kind of. You know, he was, like, a little quirky and stuff like that. Very charismatic as well. 
They were they were all pretty charismatic, and um, just exuberated confidence on stage. <laughs> to the male singer from Italy for a good 20 minutes straight or so and we, we just had a phenomenal conversation and he actually subscribed to uh, the Ocean channel and gave me permission to do a reaction video on this channel as well so if you guys would like to see that hit that like button and let me know in the comment section if you want to see a reaction of any of these bands but he gave me uh, permission to do a reaction video so that will be coming out very very shortly guys so stick around for that one and then on to the third band, Firewind. This was a band I found out about maybe back in, I want to say 2009. I might have been in high school or just right outside of high school, which would have been right around probably 2010, 2009, I want to say. And I think where I first heard of them was their music video for Mercenary Man, and I believe it was on Headbangers Ball or something of that nature. And I was immediately infatuated with the band, and I looked up some of their stuff on YouTube over the years, like... Keep Your Head Up High, I believe is the name of the song, and break the, Breaking the Silence, or Break the Silence, or something like that. I knew three of their songs going in, so I'm not like a mega fan, but I knew of them. Gus G is their guitar player, and now if you guys aren't familiar with him, definitely be familiar with him, because he's an absolutely incredible talent. <laughs> On a side note, too, he also might have played for somebody that was kind of well-known, you know, for a little while, uh, Ozzy Osbourne, which I actually saw him play with back in 2010 when I just graduated high school, and that was absolutely phenomenal. They weren't, like, just, like, straight-up power metal all the time, like I expected, like, again, like, they, 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 they went to, like, you know, the spectrum of, like, you know, I guess, like, more just generalized metal. <laughs> But not least, Dragon Force, the band with the song on Guitar Hero 3, Through the Fire and Flames. That's what we all know them by. Most of us, probably 98% of us, if we're being honest, know them by their song on Guitar Hero 3, Through the Fire and Flames. And I'm one of those guys. super fun as well to watch um, I've met their bass player a handful of times in LA um, so it was cool we didn't I didn't get to run into any of them or her or anything like that so it's unfortunate but they were absolutely phenomenal one of the best live shows I've seen in quite some time and I've seen a lot of shows and I've seen a lot of really really good shows with like high production and every every band by the way on this bill had high production and it was super inspiring to me it made me want to step up to that level of production once I get out there and start playing shows again. It wasn't just production, like, they're just, like, the jokes and the, and the, like, quirks <laughs> that they would throw out there and the fact that they were allowing, like, people that weren't in the band to come up and play guitar. They had guests from, uh, I think his name was Jeff from the band Mind Maze, which is actually a band I played back with in 2013. Forgot all about them, but they're a progressive metal band from Pennsylvania. He came up and played, like, this video game... I guess part or whatever on the guitar. A little Dragon Force Alabama for you guys. I'll play a clip for you guys really fast. It's really fucking funny. <laughs> Thank you. 
I mean, pretty damn funny, right? I wasn't expecting that. It made the show 10 times better. That gave me a good laugh. And they played very, very, very well. And I'm just happy that they allowed their, not only Jeff from Mind Maze, they allowed their guitar tech to come up and play as well, which is something you don't see very often. That's very humble and just awesome to see. Like, a band with that kind of skill, you know, would allow that. But, I, I, you know, obviously they're not going to allow chumps up there on stage. But, like, myself. Definitely a band I would go see live again. Like, all, honestly, all four bands I would go see live again. I was talking about going to see them potentially because they said that they're all going to be touring in Pennsylvania at some point again, which is awesome, and I encourage them to do so. Very humble people from the accounts that I have, and that makes me want to be a bigger and bigger, 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 bigger fan. Makes me more inspired to make videos like this. If you guys would like me to make more videos like this when I go to shows, please, please, please smash that like button, comment away, and I will definitely do so. And that's really all I gotta say about this show, man. And uh, yeah, until next time, guys. Jams out. Yeah,